Hey guys, welcome back to Furniture Flipping Teacher and welcome to the new workshop. This is going to be our very first flip in our brand new workshop. I got this piece for $15 at Goodwill. I know, $15. I actually put this up on my Instagram to see if you guys thought I got it or not. And several of you guys reached out and you were saying, wow, how do you get such great prices? Well, this was actually listed much higher. And then I don't know why, but after a few days, it kept going down, down, down. So I just got kind of lucky and came across it when it was only $15. So the one unfortunate event happened is that there was actually a mirror that was attached to this. Unfortunately, when I was transporting it, I set the mirror down and the corner chipped off. And so I won't be able to be using the mirror, but it's okay. I'm not going to stress about it because this dresser is still very, very beautiful and I cannot wait to put some paint on it to make it come right back to life. We are so overjoyed to have the opportunity to be working in this workshop and we are so excited to bring you guys along with us and it's because of you and your support that we are able to continue flipping and doing things that we love just like this. I am gonna go ahead and do the first step and I'm gonna go ahead and remove the hardware and then we'll get to cleaning. So this hardware is absolutely beautiful. Therefore, I'm gonna be taking it off and saving it in this container because I am definitely gonna be reusing it. It is a little bit dinged up and kind of worn, so we will be spray painting it. I'm unsure of the color, I'm gonna spray paint it just yet. So when you find furniture, especially when it's solid wood like this, you kind of want to always look for a brand and usually if there's a brand it's either going to be on the back or it's going to be on the top left corner on the side and that is this one particularly is kent coffee and that is a furniture brand that i have heard of before so when i'm reselling this i'm going to make sure to capture that in a photo so that people know that it's well-made furniture and they can even go and look up this company if they feel like it also something else that comes along with knowing the brand is that i can go and do some research before i list it for my price and i can see what these pieces of furniture might be selling for or as is or in a little bit better condition. And then I can kind of base my pricing off of that as well. All right, hardware is off and I'm gonna just set that aside before I get to it. And I'm gonna go ahead and clean the piece. I am gonna be just using some Dawn dish soap to go ahead and wipe down and clean off this dresser. And this is a degreaser cleaner. You just wanna make sure basically that it has that degreaser in it. Dawn is gonna be your most gentle, but you can also use several other products. And we are gonna go ahead and clean the piece because we wanna make sure that all that dust and dirt and oils and things like that are gone before we put our paint on. That way the paint can stick to the piece itself instead of sticking to any dirt or grime that is left on the dresser. And not only do we want to clean the outside so that the paint will stick, but we also want to clean the inside because this just has a bunch of dust in it and if I'm going to be selling this, I want someone to have a fresh start. I don't want any dust in there. If they were to ever take the drawers out, I would want it to be clean in there just as if it were a piece that was in my house. So along with the cleaning, see that dirty water we also want to go ahead and make sure that we've got the soap scum and soap residue from the dawn off of the dresser as well or else the paint would be sticking to that instead of the dresser so we've still got to go ahead and rinse our dresser as well 
All right, so we've got another step to go, a couple more steps actually to go before we get to actually put some paint on our dresser. It's not as simple as just cleaning and applying paint. You've got to make sure that you do the correct prep work. This surface is very, very glossy, and so the paint is not likely to adhere very well to the surface. Therefore, I am going to be doing a scuff sand and then I'm also going to be filling in some gouges with some wood filler. So that is my next step. I'm going to grab out my sander and sand out some of the minor imperfections and then figure out where I need to put the wood filler in some of those more severe imperfections. All right, we're ready for sanding. I've got 120 grit and I'm going to be using my surf prep sander. And again, I'm just making sure to get those minor imperfections out and then figure out where I might need to do some wood filler in those deeper gouges. All right, I am finished with the scuff sand, and then as you saw, I kind of kept going on to top two drawers, and I went all the way down to the bare wood. I just loved the wood grain, so I just kept on going, and it's so smooth and nice, and so I thought that this would be a really cool accent to the color that I chose. So these are gonna be the top two drawers and those are going to be the bare wood. If I don't end up liking it in the end, then I can always paint over these as well. I'm gonna go ahead and take my microfiber cloth and get all that dust away. And then there's just a few gouges and corners that I've got to fix with my wood filler. All right, I am gonna be using the Plastic Wood X. I used this a lot in the beginning when I started flipping and then mine dried up so I never got a new one, but now I got a littler one so it won't dry up. But I like this stuff, oops, because it's pink but then it dries a natural wood color. So that's kind of cool, it's color changing so you know when it's dry. The first little place that I'm going to be filling and repairing is this corner right here. It's not too damaged, but I have rebuilt a corner with this plastic wood X before. And so that's kind of what I'm gonna plan to do here again. This one is not nearly as bad as that other one that I had repaired, but basically I'm just gonna get a little bit more than I need because I want it to be above the surface. That way when I do go to sand it all down, I make sure to get it flush with the rest of the piece of wood. So that's gonna help the corner get back to normal. And then I'm gonna check and see, there are a few gouges and sometimes you might have to go back after your first coat of primer or paint and fill in some gouges that you may not have recognized before you put anything on it. And that's just kind of part of it because you know there's a bunch of gouges and they're just smaller. And so it's sometimes a little bit more difficult to see, but I'm just gonna get as many of the gouges filled in that I can and then we'll again sand that back once this is all dry. Okay, I think we've got them all filled. Like I said, it can kind of go crazy if you try to fill in all the holes, but we're gonna let that dry for now and then we'll come back with a sanding and then we'll get to paint. The wood filler has had a little bit of time to dry and it's all turned to that natural color. So that means that we know it's dry. I'm just gonna take a sanding block and go ahead and sand that all down so that everything is flush. And then I'm gonna wipe back with a microfiber cloth as well. So all of the wood 
wood filler is sanded back and sanded smooth. So we're ready to paint. I haven't showed you guys which paint I'm using. I'm gonna grab it and I think you guys will be excited. I am gonna be using Fusion Mineral Paint again. And last time I used it, I had so many requests for me to use the Midnight Blue. And I can never turn down a good blue, especially a good navy. So I'm excited to try out a color instead of just white with the Fusion Mineral Paint. With this paint, you don't need to use a primer or a top coat. It's built in there as well. So it's an all-in-one paint. I, again, I can't ever turn down a good all-in-one paint either. So especially since this is a dark color, I am good to go on the primer. And if I wasn't using an all-in-one paint, I would definitely wanna use a primer because I would probably be getting some bleed through with all of the spots that I ended up sanding through the finish. But we're gonna give it a go and we're gonna test out the all-in-one qualities of the Fusion Mineral Paint. So I'm gonna use my Zebra Palm Pro brush for this split. And I love how it fits just directly into my hand and Zebra has tons of different um, style of brushes. So if you don't like the littler ones, you could also get the longer grip ones as well. Always when you're painting, you just want to make sure that you're going in one direction. You're not going all different directions because that will make it just dry kind of crazily and not look very even. You know, when you're using paint, unless you're using a self-leveling paint, then you're pretty much going to have some type of brush stroke. So one thing to keep in mind is if you're going to have brush strokes, you probably want them to go in the same direction. So that's another reason to kind of keep that going all in one direction. First coat is all finished up and I am loving the way that this paint is just gliding right on and it has amazing coverage like I said. I think part of that is because it's such a dark, dark blue but I love it so far and so we're gonna let the first coat dry and we're gonna get started on the hardware. Okay, so these hardware pieces kind of remind me of like brass knuckles for some reason, but they're very unique. And so that's why I want to save them. And so I am going to be using the Krylon Metallic Gold Leaf. You guys know this is my favorite gold so far that I have found. And I'm just going to give it a couple of light coats, bring it back to life. Okay, first coat's done, and then once that's dry, I'll come back, flip them over, and do the other side as well, and then I'll do a top coat. Let's get back inside. First coat is dry, and so I'm gonna take a light scuff sand and just go ahead and do that right over the top to smooth out the paint before the second coat.
second coat is on now, so that's the last one we're gonna do. It's got awesome coverage, especially with that second coat. It just gave it that much better of a layer, and it's just really coming together because I can just tell there's nothing popping through, no color, no more red popping through, and I cannot wait to see what the gold is gonna look like. Again, I haven't quite decided if I'm gonna like the wood drawers on the top with the gold and the blue, or if I'm gonna end up painting those. So just in case, I made sure to save my brush in a, inside of a Ziploc bag. But right now, our job is just to wait for this to dry and head back out to more hardware. Okay, here we go. We're about ready to put this thing back together. I am going to go ahead and butter up the slides here on the inside of the dresser and on the drawers to make them slide a bit easier. And I'm gonna be doing that with Dixie Belle's Big Mama's Butter in Suzanne's Garden. And this is really cool stuff. It's basically like butter and kind of a wax also. So I'm just gonna take my brush and rub it along those wood parts there on the drawer. And then also go ahead and do that back in here on the rail inside of the dresser. That's just gonna smooth everything. And I'm gonna just go ahead and do that to all of these in here. We've got some bird friends in here and Nina is not liking it at all. <laughs> so if you hear the birds, that's what it is. They're up in the rafters. Alrighty, and then um, as I put the drawers in, I'll go ahead and attach the hardware and I'll make sure to put this on the bottom of each drawer as well. So we'll just go ahead and reattach this hardware just as it came. And I did end up putting that top coat on there as well off camera. I did a satin sheen, so it has a little bit of a shine, but not too much. All right, so I decided to go ahead and put some wallpaper in the top two drawers only on the base of the drawer, right here. And I don't know, I just wanted to add a little bit of color into the drawer since this is raw wood. I wanted to tie in that gold as well. And so I picked out this kind of peel and stick wallpaper. The only thing about these drawers is that they're actually crooked but it's supposed to be like that so if you can kind of see it's just slanted so in the middle the drawers kind of go in well they stick out in the middle but they go in ever so slightly on the sides so it's kind of slanted I don't know it's not a it's not a perfect rectangle is the moral of the story and so that's going to serve a little bit tricky as I put this wallpaper in, but we are just going to go with the flow and give it a go. All right, All right here we go. I already pre-cut. These were 24 and a half inches. So that is what I cut these to be. You can find this peel and stick wallpaper on Amazon. And I will also link it down below in the description. All right, one done. I'll go ahead and get this drawer in so it can be out of the way. And so that we can see if we're gonna like it with the wood. All right, I love the raw wood, even with the gold. And I think that, you know, not making the gold a matte gold really helps that hardware pop. Um, but also it's kind of cool to also be a little bit inconspicuous on the top here, but then you can still see the uniqueness of the hardware down below. 
I am um, gonna go ahead and seal this wood with this same Suzanne's Garden Big Mama's Butter. This is a lot more simple to kind of utilize and manipulate. So I've never used it personally as a top coat, but I know that you can. And so I am excited to go ahead and try it out on these two drawers. I'm just gonna kind of roll them out a little bit and then go to town. This will darken up the wood a tad bit, but we need to seal it. And basically any sealer that you put on wood is going to darken it a little bit because it's soaking it in. But it'll also really freshen it up. And so I think that that is honestly going to make it look even that much better. All right, that is a wrap on this piece, you guys. Only thing about moving to the workshop so fast is that we don't quite have a staging wall yet. We are going to be building one and we'll be making a video all about the staging wall, but that's gonna not be for a couple of weeks probably, because as you know, we've got a lot of things planned in July, so that's probably gonna be an August project. We are gonna make do with what we've got. And on the other side of the wall in front of me, on the second half of the workshop, we've got a little office area slash kitchen. And one of those walls is blank and it has a nice flooring in front of it. So we're gonna be bringing this in. It's not the most ideal, but it's gonna do. And we'll also be able to show you guys how you can bring a piece inside your house maybe if you don't have that staging wall. So Neiman and I are gonna bring it inside and we'll do some photos for staging. All right, we brought our same staging props over here to the new workshop. And so I am going to go ahead and stage this just simply. And I know that you may see some things here on the wall. It's not the best looking wall. We kind of have a little bit of an advantage because Neiman is a photographer. And so he can kind of take that into Photoshop and get rid of those things up there. Um, we never mess with what the piece looks like, but anything in the background can be taken out. Um, so that's what he'll do in post processing is he'll remove that, he'll remove some of these other holes and things like that. So if, if you are good at editing, you can also do that maybe if your wall has some things on it. But I'm just gonna throw a lamp on here Again, just really simple, simple staging today. I just think that the more simple that you can be sometimes, the more that it accentuates the piece itself and what it looks like. So I really want to make sure that the people that are viewing this realize and understand that this is real wood here and that this is just blue and gold and it's really beautiful even without having a whole bunch of stuff on it. So we're gonna go ahead and take some photos and we're gonna list this on Facebook Marketplace to sell. After getting it for $15, I am gonna go ahead and list this for probably around th between three and $400. It's solid wood. It is a very nice piece. There is no issues with it. The drawers slide in and out, amazing. It has some real wood showing as well. So that to me makes me remember back to some other flips that I've done and similarly styled, but also similar quality, I've been able to get those top dollar prices for that. And as I continue and continue to do this with furniture, I know that I can gauge my market and I can tell what they enjoy and maybe what they don't. So that's what I'm gonna be listing it at. So far, we haven't gotten a sale on this guy, but I have had one inquiry, so we'll cross our fingers that that might turn into a sale here soon. This was a really fun flip and it was a great first flip in our brand new workshop. And so if you are interested in further details about this as to about when it sells, what types of paint I use and all of that stuff, that can all be found over on Instagram. We like to update you guys over there when our pieces sell, if they don't sell for the YouTube videos. Follow us on Instagram at Furniture 
flipping teacher. We would love to have you a part of our community over there as well. I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. I am so glad that I took several of your recommendations in using the midnight blue color. I am a huge fan of the darker blue colors. So I am super pleased with how this dresser turned out. So if you want to continue following along on our journey of flipping furniture, be sure to follow along and subscribe down below. Give us a thumbs up, comment down below if you've tried the fusion mineral paint in midnight blue, or you know, I'm always open for some more colors. I liked using this paint. So what color should I use next? Let me know down below. Thanks for watching. See you on the flip side.